I guess we move on to our next topic. Mm-hmm. And this was our our fears, our, our top fears. Yep. The worst things we think could happen with Nintendo at E3 for their announcements. What do you got? <laughs> things that would upset you if they didn't talk about it or did and it was something bad. Mm-hmm. Or something to your favorite game that might just be a bad direction. <laughs> well, Mario Odyssey's getting pushed back. That would that would that would be huge. Oh. Yeah. Especially for a game that they claimed was basically done. Yeah. They got delayed. Mm-hmm. Out of this year, like then I could see them pushing like a smash out. Mm-hmm. That just to have a big game for holiday, but now the big game's a game you've already played. Yeah. Oh. That would be that would be I think one of the biggest mm-hmm. things for me that would be a huge disappointment. <laughs> but other than that, I mean, outside of Nintendo deciding, hey, guess what? We're folding. But <laughs> I don't. Oh, you love that Switch? We're done. Discontinued. Yeah, right? it, 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 guess what? It's a trial run like the, the uh, <laughs> NES Classic. J- just kidding. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't. At this point, they've already announced things that I don't like. So I don't know what else they can announce that, I mean, besides, you know, like I said, Honestly, being pushed back or you know delaying a game or not having a game, um, yeah, I don't, I don't see a whole lot more that I can actually get mad about because I'm already mad with some of the stuff that they've announced. So, well, what are you mad about that they announced? Well, the the whole stuff that we just talked about. But that's it. J- just the voice chat. No, oh, yeah, there's that. That's all that upsets yeah, you. Much. <laughs> well, that's that's. I mean, in the grand scheme. That sucks, but that's you probably funny. weren't going to use it anyways. Yeah, that's there's that. So I don't know. I mean, you might use it with me if we're like. Yeah. But besides that, whatever, we'll find a different way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man, pretty passive aggressive over there. Um, hey, how there, long have you known me? <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of ways that they could screw this up, and my fear is that this is the E three. Last year was kind of an anomaly of an E three. Everyone knew they had a new system on the horizon, but Nintendo announced beforehand they weren't going to talk about it. So it was kind of like a weird E3. It's like, what could you talk about at E3 that anyone's going to care about when the only thing we want to know is what this new system is that is coming out so soon, but you, for some reason, won't talk about it. Mm-hmm. Well, then they surprised everyone with Breath of the Wild, and it ended up being one of the greatest games ever made, according to reviews, in my opinion. But, yeah, again, I understand if you don't think it's one of the greatest games. So... It ended up working. Whatever may happen with the final product, it worked last year. So this year is kind of the Switch's first go at E3. And the Switch has a lot of momentum. It's still selling out. Um, Yeah, I know people think, oh, it only has two games. Fine, think it only has two games. Well, they can't keep up with demand just with those two games. So does it really matter? Yeah, right. That they don't have more than those two games, even though they do. So when, when I look to E3, it's like this is the E3 where they need to prove the Switch was isn't just some fad. It, it's not just this thing that is hitting hot right now, and by this time next year, people don't care about it anymore. Because that can happen. Fads can go like that. Oh, yeah, definitely. Like, like the Wii, a lot of people think the Wii was a fad console. Um, if it was a fad, it was one of the longest fads. Because, <laughs> like, fads you don't last that long, and the Switch was still selling really, really well into 2010. And like, that's four years after release. That's almost a full con- console cycle. Like, console cycles usually go five years. Uh, I know I know, last generation went longer, but um, in general, if you look at the history of console cycles, it's five years. So it's like, okay, is it a fad because it sold really, really well for four years? That doesn't sound like a fad to me. Yeah, right. Um, and in that fifth year, they basically didn't release any games but Skyward Sword. So it's like, don't release any games people stop having a reason to buy the thing yeah um so it's kind of like at least to me was it a fad was it not a fad and what i want to find out with switch is is it a fad is it something that people just think is cool now and then the novelty wears off and then people realize oh there's nothing i want to play or there's more issues with the switch or you Mm -hmm. know this and that and you know nintendo has enough bad announcements for it like that voice chat that ends up turning people off and i don't think voice chat the, the, the wonkiness of it is going to make people not buy a Switch specifically, but it could turn off people from multiplayer games. It could make a, make a game like people say, oh, oh Call of Duty World War II gets announced, but then te- but it has to use Nintendo's wonky voice chat setup. 
And because it has to use that wonky voice chat setup, people aren't going to voice chat, and it makes the game less popular on the Switch. That's a possibility. Um, so I guess my fear with that is just Nintendo loses track with what it has gained right now. The Switch right now is popular with adults. Mm-hmm. Very popular. It is trending well. And they are not... Um, they can screw it up. Is what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. That's one of my greatest fears with Nintendo at the C3. Now, how they could screw it up? Multitude of things. Right now, they have have the grabbed the attention of hipster adults everywhere, from athletes to Karen, people Karen. Um, it, it's just grabbed the attention of people, and I fear that if Nintendo comes into this because there's motion controls, they might be like, "Oh, we have Wii Music too," except it's Switch Music. Yeah. We and Wii Music was terrible. So whoever thought there should be a sequel to that, and then they come if on. they fix it. Yeah, but <laughs> even then, it's still one of those things like the concept itself really wasn't that great. So yeah, like, okay. And it doesn't appeal to the core audience they're building with the system. They come out and say, "Look, remember Wii Sports and Wii Sports Resort? We have Switch Sports now. Yeah, because we have motion controls. Which I mean, it'll be a fantastic game, but like." It, this is kind of it's kind of the attitude that like you built this up with we have this hardcore stuff so like the fear would be they don't announce the big third party games they announce oh we we have Mario we have Xenoblade Chronicles 2 we have you know Fire Emblem Warriors and the new Fire Emblem game in 2018 we have these hardcore games that you already know about but all of our new announcements are a bunch of these casual style games that don't appeal to the core audience of the mm-hmm. switch in the first place because they're they're like yeah well now that we got the core audience let's try to get all the wii audience back yeah and it's too i'm not saying that can't happen but it's too soon mm-hmm. and you don't do it at e3 right you, you gotta let the switch stand on what it is you, you can't all of a sudden try to make it the wii you gotta let it run right now on what it is. And that's my fear, because Nintendo's going to Nintendo, as they oh. say. <laughs> Definitely. And you, that, that phrase means they're going to screw up something. Oh, for sure. At least that's their history. The history says they don't do well with momentum. And they have momentum now, which means E3 could be the momentum killer. And I don't want it to be. No, E3 I should be the, the momentum affirmation. It yeah. should be the... It is justified yeah. why it's doing this well. Yeah. Versus... Oh, Breath of the Wild is one of the best games ever made. The Mario Kart 8 is great, but then people aren't going to play anymore. Mm-hmm. It, it should be the justification for everyone who bought a Switch, everyone who wants to buy a Switch, or even people who have been dissing on the Switch thinking it's not all that. This should be the E3 that justifies its place in the marketplace, its point to exist, and the audience that it's attracting. And if it goes back to, oh, we're going to try to get the casuals back in right now, and that's going to be our highlight of the show... It is so out of touch because what Nintendo should have learned, they tried it with Nintendo Land at E3 2012 before the Wii U came out. It didn't hit well. And what it wasn't just because it was the, the big game they capped the show with. Terrible decision to do that. Whatever. I would have rather seen them cap it with Super Mario 3D World, which yeah. we already knew, or New Super Mario World U at the time, sorry, which we already knew about. At least it's a game people actually might kind of care about. Um, versus Nintendo Land, which it wasn't explained very well. It didn't look that great. It just was really weird. Uh, it, it would be like Nintendo ending the, the the Wii announcement with, oh, by the way, we have Wii Sports. Yeah. People would have been like, oh, okay. Like, I guess it kind of looks okay. I What? That's your big announcement for the system? And Wii Sports ended up being the biggest thing. Like, the biggest oh, yeah, thing for definitely. the system doesn't have to be what you're a big enough like if they have a new like switch sports it's okay to talk about that but that can't be your big announcement and your big announcements can't be the games you already know about it can't be like yeah here's a bunch of new games and then all we're gonna do is talk about games you already know about like they have to have big core ip announcements um and i fear that they're not going to go that they're way. they're not going to do that they're yeah. just going to talk about the ones that they have and yeah they're going to talk about the ones they have they're going to they're going to start the show with the mario with the mario odyssey teaser yeah. end the show with a full trailer of, of mario odyssey which means they're starting and closing the show with the exact same big game yeah that that's a fear of mine and that uh they are all the other big games we see are games we know about including now mario and rabbids because now, you know, it got leaked. Mm-hmm. It is what it is. It's a game we know about now. It's not a big announcement anymore. It's something we expect. It'd be shocking to not see it. Um, Actually, that would be kind of an yeah. interesting little... Yeah, to, to, to someone would be like, oh, no, it well, got leaked. We're not going to show it now. We're yeah, just going right, to yeah. stealth release it. No yep. press. Yeah, um, right. 
And then on top of all of that, leading into the big hubbub that everything is going on, the only games they announced are Wii Sports and, you know, they, a big announcement was Just Dance 2018. Like, we know Just Dance is coming. Just Dance 2017 was on it. Of course, Just Dance 2018 is coming. But that's your big announcement, really? Yeah. Um, and that's a fear of mine, that but Nintendo is going to lose sight of what they have. They're going to Nintendo, and they're going to rest on their laurels. And, yeah. And be good with what they have. What my fear is that Nintendo is going to say, we're not going to support Virtual Console. Um, our online voice chat, the way you saw it, is the way it is. Period. End of story. You have to do it that way. There is no options. Um, they are going to not announce any new exciting games for core, for the, not even core people, just the people who bought the switch, nothing they announce is going to excite them. Um, besides maybe some indie games that we're not going to get any third party big announcements. Like people are hoping and assuming we're going to get a world war two call of duty announcement or that we might get an assassin's creed or we might get this, well, or we might get that, we, but there isn't might. a, there isn't a history of that happening. We, we so, might just not from Nintendo. No, no. If it gets, it, if those kind of announcements are coming, it's coming during Nintendo stuff. That's the way. The reason that Call of Duty has a history of when it gets announced for Nintendo platforms, it gets announced after all the other platforms, is because it gets announced when Nintendo wants it to get announced. Mm. Okay. You know, Nintendo, they like to control the narrative. Mm, very um, true. Sometimes to the positive, sometimes to the negative. And that's kind of my fear is that Nintendo is going to be almost so high on themselves that they're going to forget what E3 is for. Yep. See, last year. As strange as it was to only have one game on the show floor and one game primarily focused on uh, in your treehouse and your digital event, as strange as that was, that one game is a game that hits with the people who care about E3. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that last year was a wake-up call to Nintendo that, look, we didn't we won booth of the show, we won game of the show, we won several awards for best online presentation because of a single game. And yes, not every game is going to be as masterful as Breath of the Wild was, but the point was is that it was a game that clicks with the people who watch E3, right? Who attend E3. E3 is a game, is a game. It's a show for core gamers, people mm -hmm. who are really into, like your hardcore video game people pay attention to E3. Yes, you have the New York Times there, and you have you know some general media outlets that don't always come. But when you see these big booths and you see these games, I was there. Almost every game at E3 was games that hardcore gamers give a crap about, right? Definitely. Yes, there were a couple casual games here and there, but those were like off to the side. The tiny booths in the second yeah. room. Or like, not even the second room, something all buried in a corner. Yeah. All the big games that people are there to talk about are what, are what matter. And if Nintendo forgets that, if they revert back to, yeah, we got Super Mario Odyssey, and that's our only big game that we're going to have playable, everything else is going to be, you know, a bunch of side dishes. Mm -hmm. That's a worry I have, that Nintendo isn't going to learn from last year and realize, no, E3 isn't for those games. You announce your Wii Sports and your other titles at a different time. Use your Nintendo Directs to do it. Right. Use, you know, you have other delivery methods. At E3, or, focus on your core IP. Or even, like, they, I noticed, like, during their tree houses and stuff, they were yeah, kind of... Yeah, well, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, like, 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 the side especially, shows. Especially, like, on the third day when, you know, yeah. you know you're kind of stretching yourself for the hardcore content. Right. Fine. Throw, throw in your, your, your Switch Sports and your whatever. But... For your spotlight event specifically, for that half hour to an hour you have there, you need to hit on what people want. On the show floor, you need to hit on what people want. And what people want right now on the Switch is hardcore video games. So, like, feed into that audience. Yeah, Give them what they want. And I fear Nintendo is not going to do that. Because yeah, Nintendo is going to... It feels like Nintendo... Riding as high as they are, Switch is selling out, their mobile game's doing well. Maybe not as well as they want, but they're still doing well. Nintendo having really high profits, their stock price is soaring. Best Buy and Target, you know, having this huge turnaround mm -hmm. because of the Switch. Everything is going right yep. in terms of, like, financially for Nintendo with the Switch. Um, that, you know, even critically with their games, like, everything is going right that I'm very scared the misstep is coming, and this is going to be the misstep. Now, is it going to prevent the Switch from being a smashing success moving forward? No one knows. Yeah. I can't predict Hopefully that. Not. I can't predict that till I see how bad of a flood but, it might be. It, but that is my fear, that Nintendo is about to Nintendo yeah. and screw it all up and forget why people care about E3 in the first place. And it's going to be especially important they bring it this year because Microsoft is announcing, or they've already announced Scorpio, but they're going to show off Scorpio. 
and they're going to show off a bunch of new games. Sony's going to show off a bunch of new games, and those conferences all happen before Nintendo even sees the day of light at E3. So they come after all the big boys. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Meaning, they need to bring it, or those big boys are going to quickly overshadow anything Nintendo's doing. Yep. Might not overshadow Mario Odyssey. That right. might be its one little shiny thing, just like Breath of the Wild. Like you aren't going to overshadow that that kind of game entirely. Well, no, you're not, especially when they had a big giant, well, no. giant painting and stuff yeah, of yeah, it, and no. multiple yeah. paintings. And well, stuff obviously, Breath of the Wild, yeah. especially, but like, yes, people are still going to talk about Mario Odyssey, but like, that's it. Yeah. And you know, my fear is that there's that plus game delays. I don't think Mario Odyssey is going to get delayed. Well, but yeah. Yeah, I know. That's, that's, that, 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 no, that's a legit fear. Like it could happen. Nintendo's done this kind of thing before. Yeah. It happens. I'm a Zelda fan. I've you, how many I mean, delays of Breath of the Wild go through? I mean, right, I, exactly. I know it can happen. Um and like a game I fear is you know, a game a lot of people assume is going to be delayed. Xenoblade Chronicles 2. It was announced for this year. We haven't heard anything since it was announced really. Mm -hmm. People assume it's delayed. I fear it's delayed too. And not not delayed necessarily because of a bad thing, but I think Nintendo's looking at the release site and realizing like, ah, let's push that to 2018, which sucks because they promised it for this year. It would be nice for Nintendo to actually release something when they <laughs> promised they're going right. to release it. Like on the Switch, it'd be nice for them to have a new attitude that, hey, look, if we boldly said a year, it's coming out that year. Right. Well, and they announced well, it. Well, they announced it this year though. Right, like, right, right. They right, announced right. it yes, this yes. year and said it's coming this year. So that means it had to be close enough to being done to have the confidence to say 2017 in the right. first place. I can understand maybe a couple weeks, maybe a month. Maybe that's sort of December game. And, right. That's and, the, that's the post Mario Odyssey. Like people are playing it and they're just starting to come down from that and boom, there's Xenoblade Chronicles two right before Christmas. Right. Um but I also would much rather have it sacrificed a little bit of time instead of you know, gameplay. Yeah. If it's not ready. Well yeah, don't release oh, here's it. The thing. I, I never want a game to come out if it's not ready. I, I what I don't want to happen though is that it is ready, but we're delaying it to make a better release slate. Right. Yes. Um, Th that is. Yeah. But you'll never. But know. I will say that. Yeah. Well, they're never going to publicly admit that the game was ready, and then, yeah. then they delayed it. That yeah. just doesn't happen. But I also fear that they're going to stick strictly to what they've said. They said they're going to talk about games releasing in 2017. My fear is that they are strictly going to stick to that, and we're not going to hear about a single game in 2018. Not Fire Emblem Warriors, not Fire Emblem games, two games that we know are announced for 2018. Mm -hmm. So not any of their announced 2018 games, nor any new games for 2018. All we're going to get is affirmation of what's happening this year, and that's great, even if there's a new surprise announcement, which maybe that's what Mario Rabbids is supposed to be, the big surprise yep. announcement for this year. Yep. That's fine. That's great. That's dandy. That doesn't give anybody any confidence in the system after 2018. We already know what's, what we're getting. Mm -hmm. essentially we don't right, have no right, release right, dates right, yeah. but we have a pretty damn good idea of what, what's happening from from Nintendo's side of things in 2017 mm -hmm. they have a pretty packed slate of games mm -hmm. what people want to know is after they get that Mario Odyssey is there anything next or are they waiting until the following holiday again to get a big game because even though they might have fixed the droughts this year it doesn't matter if you come back in 2018 with a long drought of big games yep you can't go more than so more than three months without a big game. I argue. Two. I argue if you don't have a whole bunch of games coming out, you can't go more than a month without it. To be honest. Yeah. Because yeah. it'd be different if like the Switch, like you know, people say, "Oh, it only has two games." And yeah, that means they're not counting Minecraft. It means they're not counting you know Arms coming out or, you know next month. Like fine, they don't want to count those. Well, games. Fine. right now. You fine, have fine, fine. Well, fine. Be that way. Be that majors. way. Yeah, be that way. But it, but it's kind of like it only has two games. It's only been on the market three months. Yeah. Right, right. How many major games are supposed to release in, a, in the first three months? 10, 12. Well, that's what I'm saying. But if they had all the third party support, that is true. They yeah. would have more. And yeah. that's why I said, like, my fear is that, that they're, they're going to chase away third parties, too. Chase away third party, chase away everyone. And they're not going to talk about anything coming in 2018. And we're going to get to a big gap in 2018. Again, that's a little way in the future. But if they don't announce anything for 2018, or even if they do, and it's just the stuff we know about already, it's like, okay. So yeah. I, so after Mario Odyssey, how long did it sell Fire Emblem? Right. Yeah. Well, it's still just 2018. Okay. Okay. Well, so is there anything besides two Fire Emblem games coming in 2018? Oh, you delayed Zuna Lake Chronicles too. Okay. So those are, okay, you have three games next year. Mm -hmm. Are those games coming out before E3 or after? Yeah, because right. we're there's no more E3 between now and then. Yeah, you'll have Nintendo Directs, but okay. Yeah. That. that I, that's could be a big mistake, I think, if Nintendo does not talk about any new games for 2018. That's why I said I think it's important for them to announce a game like Smash. 
Yeah. Smash would would really make my day. Mm-hmm.